Today on Outside the Box Reviews, because you guys demanded it enough, I am extending Predator Week by one more video and doing my top 10 favorite Predator figures. Now I had kind of done this before. A while back, right after we got the last wave of Predator figures we needed to make up the Lost Tribe, I had done a video that kind of wrapped up the Lost Tribe and I had talked about my favorite and least favorite Predators and I actually had ranked my top five Lost Tribe figures. But that was only out of the Lost Tribe and of course we've had so many different released Predator figures. Now in this list, I'm not counting Dutch because honestly, if Dutch was gonna be on this list, he'd have about a third of the list. So let's get started. At number 10, we have the Guardian Predator. This figure was a huge surprise for me because if you kind of watch those videos back in the middling sections of the Lost Tribe waves coming out, I kind of felt like I was getting a little tired then. In retrospect, looking back, I love all these figures. I'm so glad I have the full set, but as collecting and reviewing them at the time, I was kind of a little worn out from just getting these reuses of the same body, repaints on the same body, same accessories, same everything. It was mostly actually the task of reviewing these figures that kind of made them tedious. But Guardian was one that really struck my fancy. Being a repaint, being completely reused parts, they did a great paint job on them. Just tons of great detail went into this figure. So he comes in at number 10. Number nine, we have the Shaman Predator. And going back and looking at my review of him, I think I was a little annoyed when I shot it. I was having problems with his staff accessory and it kind of led me to have a little less than favorable review on him. But he has grown to be one of my favorites. I like that he has long dreads, he kind of has a unique face, kind of a cool color scheme and the staff does make him unique. I actually use Shaman and Guardian, my 10 and 9 picks, to kind of anchor down my display of Lost Tribe Predators. They kind of go on either side with their staves in their hands, kind of guarding the whole group. But I really like this design, and that's why he's number 9. Number 8, let's go back to the past, before Outside the Box Reviews was even a thing. The thing that kind of sparked Outside the Box Reviews creation. The Falconer Predator from the first series of Predators. I had actually reviewed this guy over at my other channel, Cerberus Customs, and it kind of got me wanting to do more toy reviews and got me started down this dark, dark path. One day I might have to give him an updated, true outside the box reviews review, but he's always been one of my favorites. I love the character design, I love his fight in Predators, his Samurai sword fight I also thought was cool. Now we finally have his falcon, though it came from another figure, but we finally do have his falcon. And I just really like this design. Number seven is the Predator Hound. Now I'm kind of cheating on this one because it's not really a Predator, but it is a monster in the Predator line. I consider it alongside the Predators. And it's always just been a sculpt that I've enjoyed. He's fairly durable. He's taken a few tumbles off the shelf, so his spikes have all held together. But the paint on him's cool. The articulation's really cool. I was really thinking NECA was going to cheap out with this figure and just give us something kind of more along the lines of the Chatter Beast they did in the Hellraiser line. But this thing's well articulated and just nasty and cool looking. My only regret is that I wish I'd picked up a second one back when these guys were readily available. Coming in at number 6, we have the Snake Predator. Once again, another Lost Tribe member, and I think his design was pretty cool. He kind of has the fur thing going on, which makes him a little different. He just kind of has a neat look to him with the short dreads, and I like his facial expression here. In a Lost Tribe where we get a lot of the same pieces reused over and over, I think he was a cool design in that mix. At number 5, we have the Lost Predator which I always called the Borg, because that's the name I've always heard him go by. And this, once again, has been one of my favorites since the day I picked him up. He's just a cool design. I love his chest armor. I love his knife. I think I realize what it is, is in a weird way, he kind of reminds me of Boba Fett. That's what he is. He's the Predator version of Boba Fett. I guess that's why I like him, because what's cooler than Boba Fett? 
Having a sword is kind of a cool extra unique thing for him. And I love the green color scheme on him. My only gripe that's come up with this guy since I reviewed him is that his leg joints are really loose and he likes to fall a lot. Number four is the masked city hunter predator straight out of Predator 2. Up till this point in ranking, my predators have pretty much just been ranked on how I like them aesthetically. At this point, I kind of can switch and start putting out the ones that, to me at least, have significance. Obviously, City Hunter is the lead predator of Predator 2, so he's kind of a big deal within Predator movies. And NECA did a pretty good job with this guy. I like the paint scheme on him. The previous unmasked head wasn't quite up to snuff. The painting on his head itself wasn't that great, but the mask just looks awesome. I love the coppery color on it. Just overall, a cool figure. Coming in just barely at number three is the Elder Predator. And I say just barely because even just now, I'm sitting here debating whether I want to move him up to number two because I love this figure. If you watched my review on him, he was a pain in the butt to get my hands on. Well, at least a one that didn't break. And from listening to all the comments I've gotten, I know I was not alone when it came to the Elder Predator. A lot of people had broken arms. They just snapped. It was just a bad run or a bad mold or something going on at the factory. I don't remember what the story NECA gave us was. But things were just not going well. But I love the look. They reused the P1 body, but they added a lot of extra cool stuff to him. I love his fancier, more complicated dreadlocks, the piercing he has, and his lip. All that stuff just makes him one awesome figure. And if you've seen, NECA is redoing him as an 18-inch figure with newer, more accurate detail and better articulation. And maybe, since those changes have been made and molded, we can keep our fingers crossed, maybe we'll get a reissue of Elder and all those people with broken arms can replace their elder and get a new one that's even better than this one. But still when it comes to looking at my Predator collection, if I want to pick one up and examine it and look at all the cool detail on him, this one is one of the best of the bunch. Number two is the Masked Jungle Hunter. Now, this version is the old version, the less articulated version. And recently they redid him with new ball jointed legs. I never picked that one up. I didn't really see the need to because I like this figure so much. I just didn't need to replace him. I think he's just fine. And from looking at the other version, if you got that one, you probably are going to be just as happy because he looks like he could be just as good, if not better of a figure. But I love this guy. The paint on him is this beautiful sheen. And the skin tones are nice and dark, but kind of slimy looking. The sculpt on him is solid. This is just, to me, the pinnacle of P1 figures. And we've gotten a lot of reuses of the Predator 1 body. I know I've counted this off many times before, but we got the classic Predator from Predators. We got the Alien Predator 2-pack with a closed mouth classic Predator. We got the Series 3 Predator's classic Predator with the messed up mask. Get the cloaked Predator, the coming out of water Predator, the new articulated open mouth Predator, this guy, the upgrade to this guy, the Elder shares this body, the big red Predator shares this body. We've gotten this figure so many times, so many ways, so many different things, I'm probably leaving one out. But out of all of those, this is the pinnacle of all of them. Just absolutely fantastic. And of course me and my big mouth immediately have to eat my words because here at number one, another use of that P1 body and an even better one, at least in my opinion, the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Gort Predator. This was of course the prototype mask, the original mask they were gonna use for the Predator, they decided to streamline it, make it more simplistic. But this is the kind of behind the scenes piece. This mask was of course reused for the Guardian Predator, which was another one on this list. 
But this guy was just cool as kind of a piece of history within the Predator world. I love the accessory he comes with, and just overall, he is pretty awesome. So there you have it, my top 10 Predator figures list. So now you can finally stop asking me for it. It is probably the most common question I get on my comments is which Predator would I recommend? And a lot of people just want to know between two different ones they have available to them. Other people just want to know in a more general sense where to start. What I would say is any of these Predators in the top list are awesome. You obviously have my rankings of them. But when it comes to actually starting a collection, I think I would actually cast my vote more for the two lead ones of the movies, the City Hunter or the Jungle Hunter. They're the most important. They're the stars of their respective movies. So I really do feel like for beginners, that's kind of where you want to go. Now, as I said, of course, this list is excluding Dutch, but pretty much out of any Predator stuff I have, these are the tops. I didn't really intend to count McFarlane or to count the older AVPR figures from NECA, but I'll tell you those wouldn't have made this list anyway. I do encourage everyone to take a look at the full reviews for all these figures. Every last one has been reviewed. I have reviewed, I think, every Predator I own with the exception of one, which I'm just kind of waiting on NECA to give me a reason to review it. But I've actually put together all of my Predator reviews into a playlist. I'll have a link to that down below. You could go from there and find all the individual links, or you could just go through my videos on my channel and check them out that way. But I want to hear from you. Comment down below. Let me know what your favorite Predators are. Which are the best figures you've picked up? How many Elders did you have to buy before you got one whose arm would stay intact? I want to know, so comment down below. And also make sure you head over to the Facebook page be a link for that below as well. And if you're watching this video before July 1st, 2013, make sure you check out the link for information on how to enter the Outside the Box Reviews 1000 Subscribers Contest. So this time, that really is it for this installment of Predator Week. No more. Just done until NECA's next wave hits shelves. But don't worry, because the company I work for is trying to terraform this planetoid and... Somebody found, like, some eggs in an old ship or something, and, you know, I think we're just going to see what hatches out of those. That could be kind of interesting. So stay tuned and come back for more Outside the Box reviews.